Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Uh, this question today comes from Greg Lawrence, uh, W3WVA, West Virginia, I guess. And uh, he has a question about station grounding. He is pushing back a little bit against some of the standard uh, things that we do for grounding. Um, he says each radio has its own antenna. Each antenna is grounded to its own lightning arrestor. There are three each on a separate eight-foot ground rod. At the moment, I do not have a copper wire bonding the two independent ground rods to each other, nor from my house ground. Okay, well, you can see already we're going kind of opposite what I've said in the past. Here's his question. If my radios are plugged into the AC house power using its ground, the three-prong uh, AC plug, why would I need to run a separate ground from my house to the station ground rods? By doing this, could this possibly open the door for noise and interference from home appliances and such? Wouldn't connecting the two ground rods to each other provide a direct path to my radio chassis when the antennas are disconnected should a strike occur thus removing isolation? Um, we're doing the, you're, you're doing the opposite. Let, let me point out, here's what you've got. You've got a ground rod and antenna. Okay, and then this comes to your radio. And then you've got a ground rod and an antenna. And then this comes to a radio. And then you've got a 12 volt power supply. Um, 12 volt DC. Okay, and this has a three wire plug. And this goes to hot, neutral, and the longer one goes to the house ground. And this goes out to the panel. And this goes to the electric company. And there's a ground out here. And so the way 12-volt power supplies work, the ground, the green wire ground, which is this extra long plug here, is connected straight through to the DC black ground. And the red, of course, is 12 volts, and that's red. Okay, so this gets connected over to these. So this ground gets connected through the power supply to the house ground, which is connected over here. And this same one, when you're using that power supply, actually they're grounded together here if you're using the same power supply for both radios. Now let me show you what the issue is. The fundamental issue is that low frequency currents like AC R to RF, almost DC, okay, I mean, they operate very differently than what happens at RF. RF behaves very differently. Now, a nearby lightning strike, first of all, in the event of a direct strike, all bets are off, okay? Because uh, houses are not grounded to the extent that, say, a mountaintop communications facility is grounded. See my grounding video, Ask Dave number 8. Search my channel for grounding, it's Ask Dave number 8. And you'll see how all this is laid out in the Motorola handbook for doing those mountaintop repeaters. We're not a mountaintop repeater. We're a residential house. So very few hams dig up all the ground so they can install all the grounding systems that you find uh, in a communications facility. But what is the point of grounding? The point of grounding is this, to keep everything as far as possible at the same potential, meaning at the same voltage all the time. Even if there is a sudden surge that hits that, that raises the potential of the equipment in the house, if all of the equipment in the house is at the same potential, so what? There are no differential voltages 
to create large currents and burn things out. So the point is, keep everything at the same potential. How do you do that? You bond all of the ground rods together. Let me show you. Okay. So, you've got a ground rod here. First of all, you need a lightning arrestor here. They're really lightning surge protectors. And if you go to decastler, decastler.com slash reference, you'll see the lightning arresters that I recommend uh, listed there. I recommend the Alpha Delta because that's the brand I'm familiar with. There are two other brands, Polyphaser and Morgan, that have very good reputations that you can use also. But you have a lightning arrestor everywhere an antenna meets a ground rod. You need to, as a matter of some urgency, bond these together with at least number six wire. Or you can use, and I would say stranded wire, because there's more surface area. Remember, ground rods and high voltages tend to travel on the surface of the wire. So the greater the surface area, the greater the carrying capability. This also needs to be grounded over to here. Okay? Now, notice what happens. All the paths into the house for lightning are all connected together. So if you get a spike here, you've got this great big thick wire right here, plus the ground, the ground component in here, and they're held together so that this voltage right here, the house ground, doesn't go crazy. If you did not have this wire, this could go to a much higher voltage here, and you'd get a high voltage across your radios and so on and blow some things out. Now, I, my station has been hit by a direct strike, and I know that lightning is not predictable. If you have a direct strike, it's going to want to go the easiest route, but what it thinks is easiest is not always what we think is easiest. If you have a tower out here, or a large mast sitting on the ground, put a ground rod there too, and... Bond it over here, even if this is 50 feet away. Use bare number six wire. Bury it. And the wire itself kind of acts as a ground rod. So you've got ground rods there and there, out there. Everything is held at the same potential. And it is held at the same potential outside the house. That is what is so important is that you keep everything together. Now here in the shack, you really need to have a, a single point ground. My single point ground is a simple uh, one foot copper bar or copper pipe. And the grounds from everything inside come to that. And then this comes out to the ground rod. Now if you bond that over there, you don't have to bring it to both places. Now you say, well, what about a ground loop? i got a loop right here. No, what you're interested in is what's outside the house, okay? Now, as far as noise, remember this is grounded to this, so this big, thick wire is going to keep this at the same potential as this right here, which will keep uh, potential differences from developing across your power supplies and things like that. I... I cannot emphasize enough the need for proper grounding. After all, this is a safety issue. If you really do want to uh, ground your house as though it were a communications facility, you can spend lots of money in doing that. You're going to have to dig a trench all the way around your house, including across the driveway. And uh, But if you just put these ground rods in here the way that I've talked about it, you've gone a long ways toward keeping those lightning or nearby strike surge potentials out of the house. You're using lightning arresters on your antennas. You've got grounds at the bottom of your masts and so on that really go a long way uh, for protecting your station. As you can see, I'm kind of a zealot for this 
sort of thing that we properly ground our antennas. I think when you do this, you will find that local man-made noise will diminish, not necessarily disappear, but certainly diminish. Okay, don't run these connecting ground wires through the house. They go out around the house, buried if you can, okay? You don't want to put them in the house because they could get very, very warm in the event of a strike. That's the thing about using crimp connectors. Crimp connectors can get very warm and still conduct electricity. If you solder something, it'll get hot enough that it will vaporize that solder and splatter that solder everywhere and you lose your connection, okay? That's why we do all grounds with crimping. Or you can use the little uh, welding devices, or if you're really good at uh, welding, you could go ahead and um, use your, um, oh, I can't remember the name, it used to be called Heliarch, it's TIG welding now. Use TIG welding to weld all that copper together. That would work really well too, because that it takes the same temperature to boil that copper as it does the other copper. So there you have it. Go forth and do good grounding. And if you have watched this far and would like to support this channel, you can go to decastlercom slash support and find a way that suits you. And until we next meet, 73.